Thanks again for taking the time to speak with Real Film News today. Um, I'll start by asking you, uh, how did the genesis for this film uh, come about? Right, I've been looking for, I've been looking for a film that I could adapt uh, on a shoestring budget for many years. I've done a lot of shorts and obviously a lot of short form stuff, commercials, other things like that. But I've always wanted to make features. That's why I got into this and why most people get into this. So I've been looking for a subject that I could make for little or no money that was kind of actor driven, character driven, small film. And I read a few other books by this author and came upon Blood and Circumstance and it was two characters sitting in a room and but it was still a captivating story so I thought well I can expand on that instead of having to make a big book smaller where a lot of it gets lost I can kind of take a small story and make it slightly bigger and still be able to pull it off. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, now as you said this was adapted from um, a novel and oftentimes when you have an adaptation you know you already you know the great thing about it you already have an established you know uh, a group of folks that are familiar with the material if they read it but you know in that same regard uh, you know they may feel that they've seen you know a lot of the elements that are in there so are there going to be any uh, things in the film that are going to surprise folks that have read it and that are familiar with it right so people always say the book's better than the movie and usually it is because the book's more well-rounded but in this case the book was so uh, small in scope it was two people in a room a psychiatrist and somebody on trial for murder and that conversation took place over weeks and that was the entire book so from there we kind of expanded we added characters we added you know kind of a lawyer for the person on trial we added family members and we also flash back and have that same cast in younger times so we've expanded on that even if you've read the book you'd have a lot of new material and you'd still be interested in seeing the, mo the movie Great. Awesome. Uh, so this film, a lot of people could classify it as it falls under, you know, mystery or or a crime thriller. Uh, what do you because I think it's a genre that that is not going to go away. It seems like, you know, people are always uh, interested in that genre. What do you think personally it is about that genre that appeals for people? I think crime in general is, is always interesting to people. It's you know, there's there's many shows now there always has been and there always will be because there's always fresh criminals fresh crimes to kind of write about and just interesting police detectives that can go after them so you know the it's kind of a, a structure that people know and they're used to it and you can kind of have a beginning and an end and a wrap up and people like that as well so you know the only new thing you can bring to it is what those characters are like and then the actual arc of the story but people always love that genre and i think they always will and our particular one is more of a psychological, you know, primal, primal fear comes to mind where there's kind of a story being told and you may or may not be getting all the facts and you kind of have to pick who you're going to listen to in the story and you have different points of view. And I've always been, you know, even back, I don't know if you remember Run, Lola, Run was a story told three different times yeah, yeah, with three different perspectives. Things like that always interest me where the audience has to fill in large gaps and has to really engage um, rather than being spoon-fed information like a lot of shows. Okay. All right. So uh, you already have uh, Blood and Circumstance set to uh, show at uh, the D.C. Independent Film Festival. Um, do you, are you going to continue the film festival circuit, or is it, are you going to you know, jump forward with a, a brand-new project? Um, well, I'm going to continue the f film festival circuit or distribution of this film until it you know, runs its course and we find a buyer or find a distributor. Um, you know, that job could take a month, it could take a year, but you kind of have to really start the work right now and find an audience because it's, it's an inundated market and you really have to, you know, find your film's core audience and then make sure that they can find your film. And those two things are much harder in an environment where product is massive. There was, um, I think, 12,000 films submitted to Sundance this year. So you just, you can imagine what it's like for one film with no A-list stars to get anywhere so it's a lot of work but you know we'll do it and we'll get it out there okay now you've uh you've tapped in various you know genres uh whether it's as a cinematographer or as a director um will your next you know uh project uh be a direct uh directorial effort or, or will it uh be uh something that uh, kind of plays to you know your talents as a cinematographer right i, I i'll always want to shoot with talented people and be a DP for talented people. I think the the hard thing is that 
as a cinematographer, your power is limited to what stage you come into the process and, you know, how you collaborate with the producers, directors, and et cetera. So once you get a taste of kind of having control from the beginning, you really want that with all your projects. Because if I'm a DP and I show up on day one and, you know, art direction, things like that, wardrobe, you know, all this stuff is not where you'd like it to be, then there's only so much you can do on that day. But if you are with those people or you're running that whole process, then those thoughts are in your head from the beginning. And by the time you get there, that's all been thought out. and You can make it as good as it can be. All right. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time, uh, Tim. Um, Blood and Circumstance will be playing on uh, Saturday. Saturday, 4.30, um, D.C. Independent Film Festival. So check it out and let me know what you think. All right. There's something I didn't tell you.